Um, so I am going to speak about uh, partitioning improvements in Postgres uh, 11. Um, I've been working on Postgres for a really long time now, uh, 16 years. Uh, so uh, those of you who are already running Postgres are probably running some of my code. Uh, another show of hands, how, how many of you are running Postgres? Well, that's a lot of people. Uh, so, well, uh, some of the most despicable code in Postgres is mine. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and also vacuum also. So, uh, today I'm going to talk about some things I wrote for version 11. But I am also going to talk about things other people wrote for Postgres 11. Um, and I hope the good parts are mine, uh, or some of the good parts are mine. Uh, I hope uh, everything that uh, we're going to talk about is an improvement over what was uh, before. So um, you, you probably know that uh, before Postgres 10, we had some uh, very ugly partitioning code. Uh, it, it was, well, it, it, was, uh, it was written in 2005, a very long time ago. Um, it was uh, heavily based on things that already existed in, existed in Postgres from uh, object-oriented programming, which was a relation in inheritance, plus uh, the new thing that was added at the time uh, was uh, a thing called constraint exclusion. So um, it was a kind of a theorem prover for, uh, const for, for queries using whatever uh, constraints were in uh, the inherited tables. So uh, at the time, that was a huge improvement over not having the ability to have partitions at all. Um, so it was great. But uh, the way to implement it at the user space was uh, really awful. Uh, so you had to create tables like this. Well, first you create a, a parent table. And then when you want to create a partition, uh, you have to add uh, constraints uh, as check constraints inside each partition. Uh, and you have to do this manually for every uh, partition you want to create. So this was a lot of manual work. And sorry, can people in the last row here can, uh, read the, the size he, uh, of, of this font? OK. Well, it, it's not uh, too bad then. Uh, but I had to split this in two slides, because you have to add uh, some code to actually route the, the tuples as you insert them into the partitions. You, there is no way to have the system do this automatically for you. So besides uh, declaring uh, the check constraints for each partition, you need to write, uh, sorry, you need to write um, a, a function that uh, puts tuples in the right partitions. So this is uh, pretty terrible. If I had to put this uh, in a single slide, the font would be so small that people in the back would not be able to read it. So uh, what, what happened in Postgres 10, um, which was when the new partition system was introduced, was uh, so much better that we were able to increase font sizes for slides. <laughs> so uh, in Postgres 10, uh, the, this thing was uh, much easier to manage because you had to write much less code than before. And uh, to add to that, the performance of inserting tuples into the partitions was much, much uh, uh, better. So this is how it looks. And you can see that I, I have already increased the font size here. Um, so the way it works is that uh, you create a table, uh, and then you declare a partition by um, close to the uh, create table uh, s a statement. And then you can create partitions by uh, simply saying, well, I want this to be a partition of this, of this table. And you declare the values uh, that uh, are involved in this particular partition. So uh, this is a very convenient system. You don't have to write any more code than this. Uh, it is very simple to use. And it is faster than the, the old one to boot. So it is, it is a great system. Um, and there's the flexibility of creating a table that's a new table uh, as, a, as a new partition, or you can uh, attach an existing table with existing data as a partition. 
So uh, there is, um, th this is very convenient to use. Um, but, um, well, the, in terms of convenience, that's uh, where things uh, stop in PostgreSQL 10, because there are lots of limitations. Um, for instance, you only have uh, list and range partitions, uh, partition systems. So those of you who have used partition tables in other database systems are probably missing something here, right? Has anyone used partitioning in Oracle, for instance? Anyone? OK. Do you see anything missing here? No? Yeah, what, what, is, it? what is it? Hash partition, right. We don't have hash partition in Postgres 10. Uh, another thing is that uh, there's no default partition. Uh, I'll explain uh, uh, later what, what exactly a default partition is. Um, and we're still using constant exclusion uh, to uh, remove partitions from query plans. So while tuple, uh, tuple routing for insertion is much faster, uh, queries using the partition tables are not as fast as they could be. And there's a lot of DDL that has to be done by hand, I mean manually for each partition. And some things don't even work at all. Uh, for instance, if you need to create indexes, you have to create them on each partition rather than declare them on the master table and then have it automatically work on the partitions. Uh, uh, some triggers, some trigger features work, but not all of them. Uh, and you can't have constraints uh, in, across the whole partition, uh, partition uh, setup. Uh, there are things such as on conflict do, up, do update, which don't work at all. And other things such as uh, updating a tuple and having it move to another partition doesn't work either. So the system was much better than what's, uh, what was before, but in PostgreSQL 10, it was still missing quite a lot of things. So things change in PostgreSQL 11. H hang on. Uh, we were having Postgres 9, and then Postgres 9.1, and then Postgres 9.2, and then Postgres 9.3, uh, and each of these was a yearly release with new features. So how come we changed from Postgres 10 to Postgres 11 in a single jump? This was wrong, right? Well, uh, we changed the version numbering. Uh, how many people in this room didn't know that we had changed the, vers the versioning system? Okay, so this is new for you. Guys, you must never skip a year without a conference. You must come to PostgreSQL conference every year to learn about things uh, like this. Um, uh, well, anyway, so uh, we uh, released Postgres 11, oh, no. We developed Postgres 11 and are about to release in um, hopefully, hopefully a month or two. Uh, and this uh, release includes a bunch of new features related to partitioning. So we have, I have classified this in, in three uh, rough areas. We have new partitioning features, we have better support for DDL, and we have some performance optimizations. Uh, on the new partition features area, I have uh, four things. First, we have our default partition. Then we have a raw migration on updates. Then we have hash partitioning. And then we have insert on conflict to update. So <clears throat> a default partition is a very simple thing. You have the ability to use in the for values clause of creating a partition, uh, you specify va uh, values default, which means any tuple that is going to be inserted into a partition table that does not have a partition, a specific partition, <coughs> sorry, a specific partition uh, will end up in the default partition. So this is a catch-all table for all values that don't, don't have spe specific partitions. Um, in particular, for uh, range partitioning, the default partition can receive null values for the partition columns uh, because the values clause for range partitioning does not allow to get um, 
null values in, in, a, in, an, in, in some partition. So um, there are some funny things going on here. In particular, when you have a default partition and you want to create another partition later, the system has to check whether the default partition already has tuples that should go into that partition. So and the locking there is a bit heavy. Uh, it, an, ex an exclusive lock has to be acquired on the whole partitioning uh, hierarchy. So it is a bit complicated to manage. Um, and um, you need to be careful about using uh, default partitions. Uh, but it's um, still a convenient uh, feature. So be careful about this, th this stuff. Um, as I mentioned, this is new in Postgres 11. So it is still pretty new. And it hasn't been fully debugged yet. So for Postgres 11, now uh, we have released beta, uh, um, 11 beta 2. It is out there. You can download the packages, and you can try it out. So please do. Uh, and please try this particular feature, because it is going to be important. So please test. We're going to release beta 3 uh, next week. So if you have time, please do that too. So another new feature in Postgres 11 is uh, row migration on updates, which means that if you update um, the row and change the value of the partition key, so we're supposing here that the table orders is partitioned by uh, a range of dates, and you have one partition for this month and another partition for this month. So in, in, in version 10, if you try to do this, it will file with an error saying you can move rows across partitions. But in Postgres 11, it will work. Uh, there are some, again, there are some funny things going on here, such as if you have triggers, and the triggers have to change uh, the partition column also, then the tuple goes into another rerouting. <coughs> um, it, needs to <coughs> it needs to reroute the partition to uh, another part, yeah, please. Uh, to some other partition, then uh, things can become a little, uh, well, it should work, right? But this is in beta, uh, so we don't really actually know that it works fine in all uh, aspects. So please test it. Thank you. So please test it. <coughs> um, and another thing you should consider is what happens if you have some process um, deleting tuples, and another process doing this funny uh, row migration thing. Uh, does it work correctly? Well, we have tested it in the cases that have occurred to us, and it seems to work fine. But it might fail. We don't know. So please go ahead and try it out. Another thing is um, hash partitioning. So this is also new in Postgres 11. Uh, this is a very cool feature. Uh, I think hash partitioning is what most people think about when uh, partitioning tables such as uh, customer tables, that y you don't have ranges for things like uh, surrogate primary keys, uh, such as a serial column or things like that. So it, it is hard to do uh, range partitioning or list partitioning with uh, such uh, columns. But you can use hash partitioning very conveniently. It is very uh, it is very uh, nice to use. And so you declare the partition, uh, saying you partition by hash on this column. You can use more than one column. You can use however many columns you want. Yes? Is it possible for us to create partitions on different table spaces? Oh, of course. Um, so um, I didn't include that in this synopsis because I didn't want to the slide to become too complicated. But um, almost anything you have in the create table, uh, you can also have in the create table partition off. So you can add different uh, auto vacuum settings, for instance, or fill factors, or you can have uh, different table spaces or different owners, or move them to different schemas. Or you can even have partitions that are in a foreign data wrapper. So you can have a partition 
that is in a separate server. So um, in that sense, we still, we're still considering that partitions are almost like regular tables. So they have all the, all, almost all the capabilities of regular tables. It works great. Um, and it allows the extensibility of Postgres to be applied to this uh, kind of thing too. Um, so back to hash uh, partitioning. You can, you can have, um, for, for the partitions that you need to create in a hash partitioning setup, you need to declare uh, what is the modulus that the hash values are going to be divided for, and what is the remainder. So this is a division, right? So you divide the value, uh, some numerical value, um, and then uh, the system determines which partition to go depending on uh, the remainder of the division. So uh, a, a cute thing here is that you can declare modulus three for this and modulus three for this one with a different rem uh, remainder. And you can define uh, other partitions using a different modulus as long as this one is a factor of this one. So uh, these partitions are going to receive uh, twice as much tuples as the other partitions. Uh, this is a very convenient system if also you need to rehash later because you can simply um, say you had the previous, uh, the previous partitioning where you had only three partitions and now you, have, you want to move to six partitions. So you can create uh, tables that are going to act as uh, receivers of half of each partition, each. So you had a uh, client is zero, and you, know, you now have client is zero, zero, and client is zero, one. And you take half the, the tuples from client is zero and put it into client is zero, zero, and the other half you put into client is zero, one. So now you move the rows, <coughs> and then after this, the client is zero partition is going to end up empty, and you can uh, detach the client is zero partition and then attach the other ones. So there are some uh, things that you have to be careful here, such as you don't want anybody to be inserting tuples concurrently with this because it is going to mess up with, uh, uh, I mean, if client is zero is empty after the two deletes and then somebody else inserts more tuples, you're going to have to repeat. So you probably want to lock the table first, then do all the, 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 the movements, and then the, detach and attach. Um, so uh, this is already very convenient to use uh, and very easy to grow. You need to take a small uh, lock and prevent operation for a small time, but it is not terrible. It can, it probably will be improved later by having some system that can concurrently move to, uh, tuples to rehashing partitions. But uh, hashing partition is a very, very convenient feature. Yeah, I have a question here. Currently, it must be an integer if my client ID is a string, for instance. I have to convert in some kind of numerical hash. No, you don't have to do anything. And that's a, that's a, a great uh, thing in hash partitioning. Because there exists this function uh, satisfies hash partition that works internally in, in the hash partition setup that converts whatever datum you have into an integer value. So you can you just declare the column to be uh, part of the partition key and the system automatically hashes it. You almost never have to use the satisfies hash partition function directly. You only have to do that uh, when you want to do this kind of trick. <coughs> So an another new feature is on conflict though update. Uh, say you have table order items and you have people buying stuff in your online e-commerce shop. Uh, so you have 
you have an order for them which includes all the things they have bought so far and they want to buy more things. So they keep clicking on buy this one, buy this one, buy this one. And if you just have to insert into the table all the items for each thing they click on. So uh, the trivial way to do that is just do an insert, right? But if you have declared your order items table in the reasonable way, which is to say there is a unique uh, constraint on order ID and item ID, um, you cannot have two of the same item on the same order, right? So you could, in your application, you could do, well, let's insert. Oh, and if, if it fails because the, the item already exists, then I want to update. So uh, it works. You can do that. Um, but uh, it is a bit ugly, and you have to cope in the application. So there exists in Postgres this insert on conflict to do update uh, feature, which is, uh, it was introduced in Postgres 9.5. Uh, it, is, it is extremely useful. And you can use it now in Postgres 11. You can use it with partition tables all, uh, too. So the way it works is that you uh, specify the insert in the normal way. So you want for the order uh, 888, uh, is introduce five of the product, one, two, three, four, five. And, but if the product already exists, you want, uh, uh, in which case, uh, a conflict will occur on order ID, item ID, on the unique key we defined here. Uh, then if the conflict occurs, then do update the, the existing tuple instead of causing an error. And the, updates, and the update says, well, set the quantity to the original quantity plus uh, the excluded quantity that was uh, the value that was passed in the insert. So this is very cool. And you can save tons of code in the application and tons of thinking about how the heck do I manage concurrency? So I mean, what happens if the user has two browsers and click the button uh, two times on the different browser at the same time? Uh, if you try the insert, uh, and if it fails, then update, it gets nasty. This one is much better. So that's about new features. Um, do I have anyone here who has a use, who has already has use for any of these features I've been talking about? Hash partitioning? Unconfig the update? Right, right, 9.5, 9 yes. But that one works for uh, partition tables. Yeah, if you have partition tables, okay. uh, yeah, it, um, as. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, need partition tables as of now, but uh, it proves to have that, that it's not a feature of Postgres. Yeah, so, so in, in Postgres 10, it works if you if your insert into goes into the specific partition. So if you know which partition your row goes, then you, you can change the insert into to, to, to uh, direct that specific partition. And it works. Um, but if you don't, or you don't want to, then in Postgres 11, it works by referring to the parent table, not the partition. So. Uh -huh. So, um, so time scale takes Postgres and extends it, um, which means that Postgres does not get the features they write. But eventually, someone from the Postgres community is going to write that feature and add it to Postgres, and then time scale is going to have the same features. So they may be ahead in some things, and I, I, I know I, they are ahead in some features already. Um, so if it works for you and it is better than Postgres for you, by all means do it. Uh, I'm sure that in some future release we're going to have 
auto creation of partitions, and I don't know what other features that do they have, but I know they, they have some. And so they had features that we're now implementing in Postgres 11, uh, before Postgres 11. So it is, for the users, it is very convenient to have time scale. Uh, and they have other, th other things also. Uh, so we try to add new features. And if they want to cooperate, well, that's great. But if they don't, uh, there's nothing we can do to force them, right? So. Right, so, so all, Partman is also a system that uh, also creates partitions and whatever. So, yeah, so you said we can, at least in close use partition tables uh, with foreign data or efforts. How does that actually work? Because we have constraints being inherited between the, the master table and the partitions. But constraints does not go through the foreign data wrapper. So how does that work? Yeah, uh, well, uh, foreign, foreign, foreign tables are funny things. So you, you can't actually force the constraint in that way. You need to ensure that the foreign server is acting as you expect it to, to, to behave. If you insert um, violating data into the foreign table uh, in, uh, at the other side, it will mess up your system. Uh, so if you do that, you need to be careful. Yeah, but uh, my point was that at least if you think about on the same schema or on different schemas on the same database, you can have all the constraints defined and declared on the master table and have the, the, the partition tables inherit them. So you don't, you don't need to redeclare them. But right. with foreign data wrappers or uh, foreign tables, you, you will need to synchronize those constraints across all the tables. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, for, foreign tables are very convenient to use for some things. Um, I, I um, in, in this scenario, there's a lot of manual work that you need to ensure that things remain consistent. I mean, you, as I said, you, you can mess it up. You can break things in the other server, and then your system here is going to have trouble. Uh, well. But um, so that's it for new features. So I have another question here, right? No, no, it's about time scale. Oh, OK, OK. Uh, more questions before I move on to the next topic? No? Ah, yeah. Yeah, so I played around with partitions on Postgres 9, and I hit the limits. I think it was like 10,000 or so, and things started to behave weird. Did anything, anything change in 11? Uh, there are some scalability features in, in 11, but there are some things that we haven't yet completely fixed. So you can have 1,000 or 10,000 partitions. It will work, kind of. Uh, but we have people working on fixing these problems for Postgres 12. So it is, uh, it, uh, we expect that it will be much better in Postgres 12. the servers as well, a shard the servers, because I, I'm come from Cassandra and other system that has, you don't do a lot of partition the same node, you just try to, I don't know if it's so off topic. <laughs> well, uh, I, th I kind of think that if you, if you really have the amount of data that needs sharder uh, servers, maybe you sh you're considering something like Postgres Excel or a different software that can handle uh, sharded servers well. Supposedly, uh, with foreign tables, you can you can shard partitions easily uh, to diff uh, to separate servers, and it works to a certain extent. But as I said, there's a lot of manual uh, work involved still. So, uh, sharding does not yet work fully on Postgres in a declarative fashion. We expect to be there, but it is a long project, and it is going to take a lot, a lot of time. OK, so uh, besides uh, these new partition features, we, we now have some DDL features that used to work um, on regular tables and did not work on uh, partition tables in Postgres 11. So this is, these are the things that I worked on personally. 
you can now create index. You can now have unique um, primary key constraints. You can have foreign key constraints of a kind. And you can have row level triggers that you previously couldn't. So create index, I think this is, this is the most interesting one of the set uh, because uh, it means you can create your index on the partition table, on the, on the parent, and then it will work everywhere without having to do anything else. Uh, this is very, very nice. Um, whenever uh, you create an index on a partition table, it is going to cascade to all the partitions that exist. Now, if uh, some partitions already have the index, then uh, an identical index, then the system will uh, grab that index and attach it to your partition index. So um, you don't need to have the table locked for a long time in order for the uh, create index to, to complete if you have created the index on all the partitions beforehand, which is um, convenient because you normally don't want to lock the tables for a long time. So if you had created the, the index on the partitions previously, then uh, creating it to, to the parent table is going to be very quick. Uh, and also, when, whenever you create a new partition or you attach an existing table as, um, uh, as a partition, then the index is going to appear there too. Uh, either uh, cr by creating an identical index or if uh, an identical index already exists, by taking that one and attaching it to the main index. Um, so uh, this is, this is uh, really cool. Um, another thing that, that can be done is uh, create the index only on the parent table by saying create on only the parent. Um, this, is, this is a bit weird, right? You create the, table, the index, but you don't want to create on the partitions. And so when you do that, uh, no cascading occurs. Um, and you can create the indexes later on each partition and do alter index attach partition. Um, this uh, is convenient because you can create the index concurrently. But you could also have created the index concurrently beforehand. So why did we do this? Um, well, it turns out that it is much more convenient to do this for PG dump. So when you PG dump this, this uh, partition table with the indexes, each partition is going to have its particular index created separately and then attached to the main index. Uh, so this means that when you have restores in parallel, all these uh, index creations are going to run in parallel too. Um, you don't have to have a single process creating the indexes for all the partitions. So this is, this is really uh, a, co a very convenient system. Um, and it allows you to have the flexibility to create the indexes whenever you feel like it. Uh, once on, once uh, all the partitions have attached uh, equ equivalent index, the index on the partition table becomes valid, um, which means um, you, you cannot detach uh, the index later. So the system knows that all the partition index are there. Um, but another thing that you can do with uh, indexes, in particular B3 indexes, is that you can declare them unique. So you can now have unique constraints on, on partition tables. Um, this is very cool, because if you have unique indexes, you can have primary keys. So, uh, well, a unique index is just um, a regular index that is declared unique. Um, but we need to add a PG constraint row for internal reasons. So we clone that row when creating the, the constraint. And we clone that row when a new partition is created and gets the new index. Um, but there is a serious limitation here, uh, which is that all the columns in the partition key must appear in the constraint. This means that um, each individual index on each partition is enough to satisfy the global property of unicity. If we wanted to have a, a unique index across the whole set, 
uh, we would have to have a global index that spans the whole partition hierarchy or something like that. Or maybe use some other tricks such as whatever insert on update, um, uh, sorry, insert on conflict update uh, does, which is to insert tuples in, um, sorry, these are called speculative tokens in each index and then figure out uh, which uh, partition each the, the value actually belongs into. So uh, it, it is a complicated uh, feature to, to do better than, than this limitation. And it is not very useful for the users either uh, because the indexes become uh, huge and it is difficult to drop partitions when you have them referring from a global index. So for global indexes, um, sorry, for, for when, when we're using local indexes in each partition as unique constraints, uh, many things work uh, nicely, such as you drop the partition and the, the index partition also goes away. And you don't need to clean up the global index or things like that. Uh, this, is, um, this is very uh, easy to use. And it turns out to solve many real world use cases, even with that uh, apparently nasty limitation. Um, Another thing we have is uh, foreign key constraints. So uh, this is, well, this is not as great as I wanted to, to do. Uh, I wanted to have the ability to have foreign keys from partition tables to regular tables and from partition tables, uh, uh, from regular tables to partition tables, and also a mix, like from partition tables to other partition tables. Uh, but it turns out that uh, there is a, mod, uh, there's a, a lot of things that need to be done for that to work that um, I didn't have time to do it in Postgres 11. But I hope to be back uh, on that for Postgres uh, 12. So what does work? Um, what does work is that you can have a partition table, reference, a non-partition table, a regular table. So uh, it works. Uh, just as you expect in a regular table. You create the foreign key, and the foreign key is in charge of um, checking that the, other, the value in the other table exists. And if you delete the value in the other table, then it will uh, raise an error if you have referencing rows in the partition table, whatever it is, or uh, use the, on the cascade options of deleting, or set null, or set default, or whatever. So uh, this partition, this uh, foreign keys work uh, very nicely. Um, the user doesn't need to do anything weird. It just works like for a regular table. Um, and we have uh, row level triggers also. Uh, row level triggers um, uh, were already supported if you created the triggers on each partition. Uh, it, that works on Postgres 10. Um, but in Postgres 11, the new feature is that you can create an after trigger for each row that executes on the partition table, on the parent, and then all the partitions automatically inherit the trigger, and then it works everywhere uh, nicely. So these are only after triggers, not before triggers. Why is this? Uh, the reason is that after triggers cannot modify the row that is being inserted. So if I wanted to implement before uh, triggers, I would have to uh, make sure that the user does not modify the partition column, because that would mean rerouting the, the tuple to another partition. Or I would have to handle the, this rerouting somehow. So there are some nasty corner cases in doing that. So we didn't implement it, this. Um, I think the after triggers is the more useful case. Uh, so that is what we have. We may have uh, before triggers uh, later, but uh, we, we don't really know for sure. Uh, OK, that's it for uh, DDL. Any questions about this? Is, this? is this all very clear, or? I have a question. OK, go ahead, Rafael. Sure that create index commands are replicated. If you execute this command on the, on the master table, 
replicates to the to the shield table, right? Right. Yep. Uh, can you execute uh, red index or drop index commands as well? Mm, well, uh, so uh, if you create an index on the on the partition table, it will um, create individual index on each partition. If you drop the index on the partition table, then it will drop all the indexes on all partitions. Um, if you try to drop the index on the partition table, on the partition, it will not allow you to do that. Because then the index, the, the main index, would become incomplete. So you can't. Um, you need to detach it. Uh, well, th there's, there's no way to detach the index. You can drop the partition. Uh, if you drop the partition, then it works nicely. It drops the index on the not partition, and everything continues to work. And if you detach the table? You, de you can detach the table, and then the index becomes detached, too. But you can't so it if you don't have the index. Like, detach it. Drop the index, attach it. Well, if you, if you detach the table, drop the index, and then attach it back, it will create the index when you attach. That's a nice way. Index. So, so yeah, you, you have to you have to be careful there because then the attach is going to take a very long time in order to create the index. So, uh, you create the index concurrently first and then attach. When you have a uh, table with an index and you have Uh, the name of the index is not uh, is never considered. Uh, we uh, we compare the columns and that the properties of the index are the same. For example, if it's a B3, then it has to be a B3. It has uh, the same ordering options. It has the same collation, um, things like that. The index has to be identical in definition. Um, so well, that's another thing that you should be testing in, in 11 beta 2 which is if you create an index that is almost identical but is missing this one bit that is different for some reason, then does it allow you to attach? And if it does, should it fail? Should it raise an error? Uh, if it raise an error, should it uh, allow the command? Because in reality, it's not so important. Things like that are useful to, to know. And um, for the team, it is useful for users to, to try it out and say, well, I think it should work this other way. So again, please test all this st uh, stuff. And what happens if the index is invalid when you attach? Um, well, so yeah, uh, uh, the indexes, um, the partition indexes, I mean, the, on, the par on the parent table, are marked invalid as long as any index in the partitions do not do not exist or um, uh, or are invalid. In particular, if you have a partition table and one of the partitions is a partition table, and uh, the subpartitions do not all have the index, then when you attach, uh, when you create an index and try to attach it to the index that is marked invalid. It, the parent will not be marked will be marked invalid also, but when you create the, the missing indexes on the subpartitions, then it will make the parent valid, and then it will make also the parent valid. So the validity is going is, is uh, propagates up. Uh, anything else? Anybody else? Questions? No questions? Okay, so next topic is uh, performance. How we, how we improve performance for, partition, uh, for the partitioning system in Postgres 11. Uh, well, uh, constraint exclusion, the system that was used since 8.1 to 10, is uh, very slow and very limited. Uh, in Postgres 11, we introduced a thing called partition pruning, which is completely new. Uh, it is much more advanced than uh, constraint exclusion. So if you're using um, Postgres 10 partitioning or older partitioning, you will probably be satisfied with what Postgres 11 can offer in terms of query optimization with partitions where the query calls can propagate to the uh, plan. 
So uh, the way it works, and I don't want to enter in too many details, but the, the, it produces a pruning, a pruning program f uh, based on the query where clause and other clauses in the, in the query and the partition bounds. So it can compare the partition bounds and say, well, this partition is not going to be used because this where clause says it doesn't match. Um, and then it runs this program for the query and determines whether each partition needs to be scanned or not. Um, at first, this pruning program uh, was written to be applied at plan time, just like constraint exclusion. So you send the query, the query is planned, and at that moment, uh, constraint exclusion uh, and the pruning program say, OK, these partitions don't need to be scanned, so we can skip them. And the plan becomes this other one, which uh, doesn't have these and that partitions. Um, so it executes faster. So this is an example. Uh, say you have a table clientes. You have a table clientes, and you run a select uh, from client blah. So um, the the pruning system says, well, I only need to scan uh, the partition client two. So you can see it in the in the plan that uh, you're only having to scan a single partition. So this is a fast plan. Uh, if you turn partition pruning off, which you can do by setting this uh, parameter, uh, and you run the same explain, you're going to see that it scans all the partitions. So this is much slower. And it is probably going to not matter much uh, uh, in a simple system, because this, uh, each scan is going to be very fast. But if your system grows very much, then each, each in the scan uh, on partitions that don't actually need to be scanned because there are notables there, uh, becomes slow. Uh, if you have a thousand partitions, then this is really slow. So having the system do prune, uh, come up with a smaller plan is much better, much much better. Uh, but this is still plan time partition. But we can have execution time partition now. Uh, sorry, execution time partition pruning now. So this means that if you prepare a query. Uh, if your system is using a prepare query system, then uh, you will have the partition pruning occur when you send the query first, and then when you set the parameters later. So partition pruning at execution time improves the query times even more. Um, but so uh, it, it happens when, when the parameters are sent, and it also happens during execution when you have a, a scan of a partition table that is uh, parameterized from a scan of some other table. So if you have a cross join of two tables, or some join of two tables, and one, uh, you have a, a where clause on one table, and this produces values that are used to look up on the other table, then this is going to uh, prune partitions too. So this is even, even faster. So this is, this is a, a, a simple ex, um, example. Um, if you execute some query, uh, and then you determine that, uh, the, sorry, the system determines that doesn't need to scan such and such tables at, uh, at, at plan time, then you're going to see the subplans removed line in the plan. So you're, you see that uh, six partitions are not being scanned scanned at all for, for executing this query. Um, another example is um, if you have the join I was telling before, where you have one partition table and another uh, table, and you have some relationship between the two. So what happens here is that uh, some of the partitions appear in the plan because they were not pruned at plan time, because this, is, this constraint is too general uh, to prune partitions at plan time. So what happens is that at execution time, this part, these plans are pruned, uh, sorry, at execution time, these plans, these plant nodes are pruned, so they are never executed. And you can see in the plan, uh, never executed. And you only execute the index scan of the partition that contains values uh, for the values passed from the other table. So 
You don't have to worry about this, really. It just works. You run your queries, and they will be much faster now than they were before. <coughs> um, finally, we have partition-wise joins in Postgres 11. Uh, partition-wise joins mean that if you have parti uh, uh, two partition tables uh, and you want to join them together, uh, normally the system will have to cross the rows from all the partitions in one table to all the partitions in the other table. <laughs> right? That is what normally occurs. But in Postgres 11, if the, if the partition bounds are defined in exactly the same way, so they have the same bounds for each partition, and the join clauses include the, the partition column, then uh, the, partition, uh, the join can become partition by partition. So you don't have to cross all uh, rows to all the rows on, on the other side, but instead you have to cross the rows from one partition to one partition on the other side, and then the rows from the other partition to the other partition on the, on the other side. So um, I think I'm running out of time, but uh, a simple example is that you can create the tables partition identically, and then the plan would look uh, completely different, because this is, this is the plan where you, uh, you don't have uh, partition-wise joins. Uh, you um, put together all the, ta the tuples from other items uh, in an, uh, using an append node, and then join them with uh, an append of all the rows in the other side. But with partition proning, uh, what happens is that you have uh, a loop here that joins uh, one partition to the equivalent partition on the other table, um, and then uh, joins uh, the other partition on the other table and the, with the equivalent partition on the other item ta table. So, and then you merge both results together. So this is uh, much more efficient because you don't you don't cross everything. This, this plan is much faster than the other plan. Um, well, uh, you can try it out and it will work. Now, this only works in Postgres 11 for partitions that are exactly the same, partition exactly the same way. So uh, the values have, the, the bound values have to match exactly from one partition table to the other. In Postgres 12, we hope to have a, uh, a joint system that can match uh, even if, the, if uh, the boundaries are not exactly the same. So you have uh, partition for thousands here and partition for uh, 10,000 on the other side. It will, it will, uh, it will still work, uh, we hope, in Postgres 12. There's one more thing I don't have a slide for, which is partition-wise aggregates and grouping. So if you have a group by clause, and this group by clause includes the partition key, then uh, the system knows that the groups don't have to, don't cross partitions. So the aggregate is much uh, more efficient. Uh, but well, uh, I guess, um, we are out of time. Uh, I guess we're out of time. <laughs> so well, that's it. Um, I, uh, no, no type for questions. Either. No type for questions. <laughs> <laughs>